thought uh, I would review this because uh, I, I somehow this morning while I was having breakfast, I thought I think this was a little bit confusing and wasn't clearly presented in what I was doing before. Uh, but so uh, these are our old Chinese reconstructed forms, right? So velar, uvular, velar, uvular. Oh, maybe I should. Uh, so what do we get? This is old Chinese. This is middle Chinese, right? So what do we get? So in type A syllables, uh, this ga changes into a voice velar fricative, and in type B syllables, it's a G. Yeah. Uh, and then the uvular is a voice velar fricative in type A syllables. Uh, but it's also a voice feeler fricative in type B syllables. Yeah. So that's why. So so this is the this one's the this one. That's this initial. Um, so that's so yeah. So on the one hand, this is what I, what I'm trying to say. On the one hand, from the perspective of Middle Chinese phonology, you can you would say that. Uh, that, that this initial and this initial are in complementary distribution, right? Because this one's in type A and this one's in type B. You know, you can you can say these to merge here and write it like this, right? Uh, yeah. But from the perspective of their origins, yeah, or like just to actually restate that, uh, from the perspective of Middle Chinese, it's a accidental gap, if you like that uh, G is uh, not found in type A syllables, yeah. Uh, but gamma uh, is found in both type A and type B. So what uh, most people do here is they uh, reconstruct this one back to the G. Um, and now, I mean, that's kind of the, the the whole story, right? If we want to imagine what happened, you know, as time went along, probably, yeah. So probably first, uh, this changed into uh, a. Is this the right symbol? I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, it changed into this, and then we had a time when we had uh, kind of when we had uh, well, I'll just say. We had, there would have been a time when we had sort of AG and BG and A and B. Uh, and then this palatalization came along that, uh, well, that, I mean, then, then, yeah, let's say then the B ones fronted and the uh, G ones, th th this one at least sort of freaking vibes, yeah. So then we that becomes then uh, a system where we just have uh, these two, but then this one has these two origins, right? It has, it has these, it has, well, it has these three origins, right? That I feel like this hasn't helped a lot, actually. But <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I would want to explain what was going on with these kind of two types of gammas, right? You have the two types of, of gammas, if you like, that are distinguished in the in the Middle Chinese uh, rhyme uh, table tradition, where one is in type B syllable and one is in type A syllable. But then in other contexts, I have probably said, or I maybe will probably say, that gamma and G are in complementary distribution. And it's it's basically from the perspective of middle Chinese, it's a phonological question, right? Like it, you either have to say that um, these two are phonemes of G, and then this one doesn't occur in type A syllables, or you can say these two are phonemes of gamma, and this one only occurs in type B syllables. Those are your sort of two ways of phonologizing middle Chinese, and then in terms of how you reconstruct it, um, the, what Baxter and Cigar do is they, they, uh, is, is they, they say that 
um, basically that let's do it from this perspective. What are the origins of G's? The origins of G are, well, for our purposes now, just G, but you could also have uh, this, right? And then what are the origins of, of uh, this gamma? They are, uh, uh, they're, they're, well, yeah, okay. They're actually, uh, G in rounded syllables, so, so capital G in rounded syllables, and G in type B syllables, also this one in type B syllables. Uh, and then, whoops, am I doing this right? No, this one is type A syllables. And normal G in type B syllables. Okay, so uh, now I have reviewed that, which I felt like I had left a little messy. Um, when explaining this, I didn't mention that this, basically this, this initial in Middle Chinese only comes up with in rounded vowels. So that's why we added this W here. You can just see that as a, as a weird phonotactic fact, if you want, uh, in Middle Chinese. So, so now I erase all this. <laughs> 